The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Crystal McDonald with the U.S. Department of Energy's Better Buildings Initiative. I'd like to welcome you to the September edition of the Better Buildings webinar series. In this series, we profile the best practices of Better Buildings Challenge and Alliance Partners and other organizations working to improve energy efficiency in buildings. Today, we will hear from our collaborative partners in the K-12 sector to raise awareness of ways to enhance the learning environment for children across the nation. This is our back to school special. Our guests include the Green Schools Alliance and the Center for Green Schools at the U.S. Green Buildings Council. The question is, what are school districts doing to manage energy costs maintain healthy learning environments, and meeting STEM academic requirements. The panelists will discuss tools you can use to enhance the environmental, economic, and energy performance of school buildings. After all, more than 50 million students and faculty occupy our nation's nearly 130,000 school buildings for over 1,000 hours and 200 school days every year. Healthy, comfortable facilities are vital to the well-being of the K-12 student and faculty population. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters. Next slide, please. Today we are joined by Dr. Sharon Jay, and she is the Executive Director of the Green Schools Alliance. Sharon is formerly the Director of Sustainability at the New York City Department of Education. She has more than 15 years of experience in sustainability work in public and private K-12 schools and public and private higher education. She has a bachelor's degree in business administration, a master's degree in project management, and a doctorate of education in educational leadership. She is a sustainability facility professional through the International Facility Management Association, also known as IFMA, and she's, offered, she's authored the IFMA's uh, IFMA's How to Guide on Carbon Footprinting and co-wrote the How to Guide on Waste Management. Sharon, we appreciate you being here today. And then our next panelist is Anissa Hemming. She is the director of the Center for Green Schools at the U.S. Green Building Council. She provides strategic direction to USGBC's work in schools and coordinates an organization-wide team to promote environmental sustainability, health and wellness, and sustainability literacy in school systems around the world. Anissa is a Little Rock native and holds a BS in architecture from Washington University in St. Louis and a, a master's in architecture from the University of Washington in Seattle. And then of course, um, I'll be the final presenter to round out the conversation and I am a policy advisor here uh, at the U.S. Department of Energy within the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy and I do serve as the K-12 uh, education sector lead, and uh, my education is from the North, North Carolina a and State University and a master's in energy and environmental management from the George Washington University. So with all of that said, uh, I think a cumulative, uh, cumulatively we all have a lot of expertise in K-12 facilities, and we are happy to bring forward our programs and products to help move our K-12 sector forward in the uh, environmental, energy, and economic uh, performance of our school buildings. Thanks to you all again for being here. Uh, before we get started with our presentations, I want to remind our audience that we will hold questions until near the end of the hour. Please send uh, your questions through the chat box on the webinar screen throughout the session today, and we'll try to get to as many as we can. The session will be archived and posted to the web for your reference. Next slide. Okay, so now that we've done the introductions and uh, taking care of food housekeeping rules, I'd like to uh, pass the mic to Sharon and look forward to her presentation. Sharon, it's all Thank yours. You. Thank you, Crystal. We'll go to the next slide. So first, what I'm going to do is give you a little introduction to the Green Schools Alliance if you don't know about it. Um, we're going to start with um, what we do. We connect and empower champions who are creating healthy and sustainable schools. 
our focus is the sustainability champion in the K through 12 school, which literally could be anybody. It could be a facility manager, a teacher, a principal, a uh, science education specialist, an AV tech. It really doesn't matter who you are. If you are interested in making healthy and sustainable schools, then you are a sustainability champion. Next slide. So we are an alliance. Our community represents more than 8,800 schools, districts, and organizations from 46 U.S. states and 82 countries. Uh, we have a, uh, our organization was started 10 years ago with a leadership commitment um, on climate and conservation, and we have over 560 leadership commitments from superintendents and principals around the world um, where they are working on making their schools more healthy and sustainable. And we also have an online community that is designated and designed to bring the Green Schools community together. So everybody that is on this phone call and listening to this webinar can actually join our online community and be part of a bigger Green Schools community. Next slide. So we focus on systems level innovation. We use the framework called Whole School Sustainability. It works on bringing together the pieces of sustainability through the organizational culture of the school, making sure the planning and policy is in place and communications are happening to make it sure everybody is on the same page. We focus on buildings and the physical place and the site of the school, and then the educational program to educate the students and our next generation to be able to have the right behavior and bring it, those behaviors out into their community. So this is the whole school sustainability framework and this is what we focus on in our organization. Next slide, please. So we focus on designing integrated tools and programs that um, empower students, that support schools and districts at an institutional level and build community so that we're all talking to each other and learning from each other and breaking down those silos that is preventing some of our work to be able to move forward and have more green schools in our uh, country. Next slide, please. So I'd like to talk a little bit about our online community. Um, in our online community, we uh, have a resource center. We have over a thousand curated links uh, to books, field trips, resource papers, white papers, um, nonprofit organizations, all kinds of different things that you can think of that a school might need to be able to <clears throat> do their work. Uh, we have a place where you can have discussions with other people in the green schools world, where you can ask questions, um, do different things, ask troubleshoot uh, problems, kind of go from there. We have a video gallery. Most of our video gallery is actually uh, students made videos that have been done in the past through our Green Cup Energy and Recycling Challenges, and they're quite funny and inspirational to other schools to be able to do the same thing. We have a success story blog where our schools are telling their story and telling you exactly what they've done in their schools or their school district to be able to make their school more green so you can learn and implement it in your own school. We also have a crowdsourced calendar, so you are welcome to go onto the calendar, learn about other things that might be going on in your area or nationally, and also post your own calendar events so that other people may come to your event. Next slide, please. So one of the things um, in the next couple of slides, I wanted to highlight very specific programs that the Green School Alliance has that are very focused on energy efficiency or energy management, some of that toolbox that Crystal was talking about that we were going to um, elaborate on for the webinar today. Uh, we have a subset of our Green School Alliance community called the District Collaborative. This is made up of 24 of the largest public school districts in the country. Um, represents almost 6,000 schools and almost 4 million students. And on a monthly basis, the sustainability directors for those school districts meet. We learn from each other, uh, learn about best practices. We want to uh, work together to influence national policy and then leverage our volume to be able to increase our purchasing power. So if you are from a school district that has more than 40,000 students, you are welcome to apply to join. The district collaborative, your superintendent needs to sign a commitment letter. Um, if you're a school district under 40,000 students, you are still welcome to join the Green Schools Alliance community. Next slide, please. 
So we also offer um, a discount for the Building Operator Certification Program. So this is actually run by another group. It's not run by the Greensboro Alliance. But what we did within the Alliance was actually worked with them to bring this program to more uh, school districts. So if you are a uh, community member of the Green Schools Alliance, you are eligible for a discount for the program. The building operator certification focuses on the operations of facility systems so that you can improve, uh, improve energy efficiency and save money. It's a uh, very awesome program. So if you want to learn more, you can either go to the Green Schools Alliance community if you want to get the discount code to be able to get the discount for it, or you can go to bboc.info as a website and learn more about the program. I encourage everybody to take a look at it. Next slide, please. So we also have a uh, partnership with an organization called Project Learning Tree. They have been doing teacher professional development in the environmental education world for about 40 years, and they have a full suite of curriculum and programs for teachers to be able to teach their kids about environmental education, but very specifically in the green schools world. They actually have uh, items called investigations where the students actually go investigate energy use, waste and recycling, water consumption, school site, and environmental quality. So if you're interested in learning more about bringing this type of curriculum to your school, please go to our website to learn more information. Next slide, please. So we also, I would like to highlight our youth leadership guides. We partnered with Greening Forward and the Pollination Project to bring these to you on our website. Uh, they are youth written how-to guides on how to plan, promote, and fundraise for your environmental work. Some of the examples of some of the titles is how to resolve conflict, how to present a webinar, how to engage elected officials, how to recruit and manage volunteers. These are all written by high school or college students. Uh, to guide other high school or college students on how to do these things. And these are available for free on our website. Next slide, please. So just wanted to give you a little highlight on some of the things that we are doing in the Green Schools Alliance. We are working on building out a sustainability tracking and roadmap tool, which would hopefully make it easier for people to, let's say, apply for Green Ribbon or track what they're doing in their schools um, with the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. Give them a really good roadmap of whole school sustainability and what they're doing. Um, we're also working on expanding our student engagement program, which we didn't talk about that much on this webinar, but if you'd like more information, please feel free to go to our website. And we, we have a, a lot of interest in our district collaborative in uh, crowdsourcing some utility dashboards. So we're working on that as a project. Next slide, please. So just to wrap up, and anyone can be part of our community. Uh, if you're a sustainability coordinator, a conservationist, you work for a nonprofit, you're a facility manager, or a principal, a student, it doesn't really matter who you are, as long as you're interested in helping schools be more healthier um, and more sustainable, you are welcome to be part of our community. It is free. So next slide. So this is our information. Our website is greenschoolsalliance.org. You're welcome to email us at info at greenschoolsalliance.org if you have a very specific question. As a wrap up, before I turn it over to Anissa, I'd like to say um, that our thoughts for the presenters go out to uh, our districts and schools that have been in the areas that were affected by the hurricanes. I know for the Green Schools Alliance, we uh, five of our district collaborative schools Houston, Austin, Broward County, Palm Beach, and Orange County in Florida um, have all been you know, severely affected by the two hurricanes that we've had in the past couple of uh, months, so the past couple of weeks. So um, just our thoughts and prayers go out to them. And I'd like to encourage anybody listening, if you have some way of donating financially directly to those school districts, I think they would greatly appreciate it. So I'd like to turn it over to Anissa to talk about Center for Green Schools and USGBC. Great, thank you. Hi everybody, this is Anissa. Um, I am from the Center for Green Schools. We're housed at the US Green Building Council. So um, I'm gonna dive right into slides and actually I think you can go two forward, two slides forward. Yeah, thanks. So um, the US Green Building Council, for those who are not familiar with us, 
<clears throat> we're a 501c3 nonprofit, um, and the name is uh, has council in it because we are actually a council of members. So we have around 12,000 member organizations um, that join us in defining what green building um, and green built environments mean and how how we um, put parameters around you know what that what that um, entails so the community of the council really has a lot to do with what we do as an organization so next slide um, a lot of people know u.s green building council um, for the lead rating system um, lead is a tool that we developed in order to move the market um, toward green building practices. So when it comes to schools, the Center for Green Schools was established to um, create and, and um, um, strategize the various, strat the various tools that we need in order to green our schools. So LEAD is, is a tool that we um, use, and it's a good tool, if I do say so myself. But, <laughs> but uh, the Center for Green Schools is around to develop all the other things that um, are needed to get our schools um, to the goals of a green school. So next slide. The way that we define our uh, green schools is with the definition that um, is used by the US Department of Education in their Green Ribbon Schools Award. Um, and that is uh, a school that reduces environmental impact, um, increases health and wellness, and increases literacy in environmental and sustainability concepts. So when we talk about a green school, these are the three goals that we're talking about. So the next slide. Um, with you guys today, I, I picked out three particular opportunities for, that I think might be interesting to this um, group. One are our professional learning opportunities for school and school district staff. Um, the second is about measuring and certifying performance of buildings. Um, and the third is about getting all of this stuff into the classroom, which I know is of real interest to most of the people that work in facilities um, or in operations um, within schools and school districts. So let's go to the first, next slide, professional learning opportunities. So next slide, um, for the last seven years or so, we've run um, a professional learning um, community of school district sustainability staff. So while Sharon's um, district collaborative um, is focused on large districts and also is focused on um, uh, affecting um, policy and doing some advocacy on a, a national uh, or state level. This is really focused on those staff um, and what they need, um, the, the sort of professional development they might need to do the job within the school district. And um, we've been running um, in-person trainings for these staff and uh, online trainings for years. We have around 120 school districts that are a part of this, and it's open to anyone at a school system, so on the system level, who is doing work related to sustainability um, in their school district. So this includes energy managers, uh, resource conservation managers, um, green school, green project managers who do um, green construction, um, and people who are actually sustainability coordinators or sustainability directors and, and have that title. So a whole a whole range of folks. So next slide. Um, the what we do with this network is um, uh, again the the annual in person free training that we host alongside the Green Schools Conference, which I'll talk about later. We also um, host regular webcasts for the group um, to share with each other what they're working on and and how they're doing it. And then we also have an online network um, that is very active with questions and answers. Um, about the the way that people are doing their work in these school systems. So um, that's just a, a note to schools at usgbc.org, an email, if you want to join or if you know someone that would be good for that network and, and could really benefit from connecting with those other folks. So next slide. Um, another great professional learning opportunity is the Green Schools Conference and Expo. Uh, we run this in partnership with the Green Schools National Network. Um, this coming year, it's May 3rd and 4th in Denver, and um, we typically have um, upwards of around 1,000 people um, 
who are all over the map uh, in their interest in green schools. About 30% of attendees are classroom educators, um, teachers interested in, in um, green schools. A third are from the building industry. Um, and a third are district or system level staff. So those are rough numbers clearly, but that's around the breakdown of who comes to this conference. So it's a really great intersection of everyone that's involved in making green schools a reality. Next slide, please. So the final thing I'll say about professional learning opportunities is that we have a whole host of uh, research publications on our uh, website. So we have some focused on health, this middle one, the impact of school buildings on student health and performance. Um, powering down is a guide for um, reducing energy use um, without major building upgrades, so behavior-based energy efficiency. Um, we also have some really quick web trainings on this same uh, website, so um, about 10 minute or so long uh, web trainings on different aspects of green operations. Next slide, please. So the second topic I wanted to talk about is measuring and certifying performance. The next slide. So as as I discussed, we're the US Green Building Council. We're known for for building certification, um, built environment certification. Next slide. Um, and we use the, the expertise from our 12,000 plus member organizations to understand what that should include and um, what that, um, how to define what a green environment is. And uh, USGBC members do include um, schools and school districts. And so those voices are in the development of the rating systems that we have Next slide. So a lot of people know the LEED rating system. Um, we certify uh, a lot of square feet a day <laughs> in this rating system, and about 40% of our projects that we certify are outside the US. So this is an international rating system, internationally recognized. Um, and I bring it up here not just because um, it's a great tool for um, anyone working in green building, um, it's a third party verified stamp of approval that says that you have actually done what you said that you were going to do when it comes to green building. Next slide. But it's also a tool that you can use um, at any time looking up um, strategies and resources for various aspects of green operations and construction and design. So the credit library here, you can go to the next slide actually you can find at this website. The credit library, um, you can click into all the different credits of the lead rating system uh, for new construction, for operations, for interiors, whatever, and find all of the guidelines that are within lead and also all of the resources that are included in the rating system. So anything that you um, have a question about, uh, you know, how low emitting is low emitting when it comes to materials and, and health, um, any of the guidelines that we've developed with our um, experts are on the web for you guys to find, and this is the place to find them. So next slide. So the um, system goals for LEAD um, really guide the content of the rating system. So anything that's in the rating system is hooked to one of these system goals. And you can go to the next slide. Lead version four, the current version, is really focused on performance. And we as an organization have been um, moving in this direction um, for years now. Um, the original lead rating system that we released decades ago is, um, you know, was, was formulated basically as a series of hypotheses, you know, well-researched, <laughs> uh, evidence-based hypotheses, um, but really we're, we're at the point now where we can, um, uh, we have enough data to know what actually works um, in making a difference in the built environment um, based on our years of experience with LEED. So we're, we're to the point where the focus really has to be on, okay, what, what do those actions actually yield in the built environment? What are they, what do all those actions we do in design, construction, and operations, what do they mean 
for the actual performance of a building. So next slide. So in December, we released ARC. Um, ARC is uh, exactly what it says on the screen, <laughs> an action-oriented, measurable, green performance tool. Um, it's cloud-based. It's online. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, and it is in five very specific categories of performance of a building. Any building that is LEED certified is already in the ARC platform or can be. So any building that is LEED certified can already start measuring performance with the ARC tool. If the building is not LEED certified, a building can be registered into the ARC tool. Um, it's very reasonably priced. It's meant to help uh, help us and help you understand performance and understand which actions affect performance. So this is a benchmarking tool. It's a score, and it's um, it's the building's performance is compared against similar buildings um, in all of these different areas: energy, water, waste, transportation, and human experience, which includes um, air quality and um, occupant satisfaction. So next slide. <clears throat> I wanted to show you just a little bit of the behind the scenes here. So um, a lot of the lead credits you would see in ARC, um, it's a good example of sort of the connection between an action and the score. So you can see on the left side, you sort of record what actions you've been taking in the building, what actions the um, the, the district or the school has been taking um, related to green performance, and then um, it yields a score. Um, for energy and water, this can interact with um, all kinds of different utility dashboards that you might already be using. You can automatically upload your portfolio manager stuff um, if that's what you're using. Um, so it's just a, it's another tool to to give you a fuller picture of sustainability performance of your um, building. Next slide. So uh, the third and final uh, topic I wanted to address with you guys is, is how to get all of this into the classroom. So we have two ways that I'll uh, talk about. Next slide. The first one is start is um, is active right now. Green Apple Day of Service. Um, this is at greenapple.org. Um, if you're at a computer, you can go check it out real quick. It's a um, uh, uh, way for schools and teachers and and volunteers to commit to action, uh, a day of action at their school related to green schools. So this is a, a, a commitment we ask people to make to um, draw attention to green schools topics within their school. They choose their own day of action you name that that day of action on the website as a commitment. So you're making a commitment to a day. Um, next slide. We've been doing this for uh, five years and we've seen um, over 790,000 volunteers in over 73 countries around the world do projects. Um, this, is, this is one of our times to really reach way out to a very broad audience uh, when it comes to uh, green, green operations, green schools, uh, green education, all the topics that are important to green schools. Next slide. So this is just a couple of examples of pretty cool projects that we've seen around the world. Um, this this one up in um, Guatemala is one of my favorites. They ran some um, green schools workshops for private schools throughout the year and through those workshops raised money. Um, so the private schools paid for the workshops, and then they pooled all that money and did um, a few projects that needier schools in their community um, to fix them up and, and um, make them healthier places for those kids to go to school. So um, just some really cool stuff going on around the world. So next slide. So Green Apple Day of Service is a chance for a, a school to make a commitment to a day of action. We're connecting this much more strongly this year to a platform that we released uh, about a year and a half ago called Learning Lab. And this is a, a platform for sustainability education online. Um, it is a collection of high quality standards aligned sustainability curriculum. 
um, from a variety of partners, including the Nature Conservancy, Global Oneness Project, um, STEM Hero, there are a number of others. And um, each of these is searchable by grade level, by subject, by theme, like sustainability theme. Um, and when you get into the platform, next slide, you can you can see what exactly is included in that um, lesson. So they're often organized into modules of three different lessons. And you can dive into different lessons and it tells you exactly what's included, what to expect as a teacher that you might need to know in order to teach that lesson, um, what you would be covering, what standards it's aligned with. Next slide. And it also helps, it walks it walks um, an instructor, a classroom teacher, through how to prepare for that lesson, what materials to collect, et cetera, um, the details about how to teach it, um, how to assess learning, so different ideas for how to assess whether students are understanding, and then different ways to extend that learning if there's um, additional interest in um, the topic area that might uh, that students might want to explore further. So these are very deep. Um, uh, this is a very deep level of information for um, teachers to um, dig into in Learning Lab. So that URL, which everything will come back to you um, at the end of the, in the follow-up resources that um, DOE will send you guys, but the URL is learninglab.usgbc.org. So next slide. So as I said, when I first started talking about Learning Lab, um, we're really connecting Green Apple Day of Service and Learning Lab because um, many times the Green Apple Day of Service projects that we see come out of schools um, have some component clearly of educating the students that are in that school about the kind of activities that are going on at the school, the kind of sustainability action that we would like to see in schools. Um, and uh, bringing the students into that as a learning opportunity is clearly um, pretty central to what we want to do with this day. So in each of these project ideas that you would find um, at greenapple.org, um, each of these project ideas is linked to um, a, a, a classroom activity of a um, lesson within Learning Lab. So that um, we can we can connect the action with the learning and make sure that um, anyone working in in school operations or school design and construction has some tools um, to work with teachers and and um, help everyone get on the same page and work together toward these objectives. So final slide. Um, here's my email. Uh, happy to um, be in touch. If any of this stuff sounds interesting to you, um, our general email inbox is schools at usgbc.org. Um, so that's where um, anyone can uh, ask for information either through our website or, or um, through various uh, uh, opportunities we have posted on the website. So um, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciated the opportunity to talk to you and I will pass it back over to Crystal. Thank you, Anissa. I really appreciate that. Um, and just for our uh, audience, um, a quick reminder is to send in any questions you may have through the webinar chat box on your screen. Uh, we are collecting these uh, for our Q&A period at the end of the session. Um, so now I will round out the presentation to discuss what we are doing in the realm of K-12 facilities here at the U.S. Department of Energy. Next slide, please. You can, uh, and then next. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a sense of what I'd like to touch on, you know, why energy efficiency, and then the Better Buildings Initiative itself. It's a large platform of um, different segments, but overall, we profile leadership. I'll talk a little bit about what our K-12 partners are doing, and then how the agency is involved um, with K-12 school districts and individual schools across the country, and then some very specific information around energy matters. matters. Um, also wanted you to know that we will include um, an appendix with the presentation to 
give you tools and resources from various uh, technology offices within the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Next slide, please. This figure is astounding. Uh, one of the things we looked at uh, with our education sector that uh, with a 20% energy uh, reduction, and that means energy consumption, we are looking at a potential of $3.3 billion in savings. And then more specifically around the K-12 sector, we're looking at, in the U.S., about 400,000 classroom buildings, 12 billion square feet uh, that consume about 840 trillion BTUs annually. Um, and that's pretty significant. Uh, so we do realize that school buildings are an integral part of our communities. Um, critical infrastructure, and it represents a significant amount of the commercial uh, building space in the U.S. Next slide. The Better Buildings platform stresses the importance of leadership, and so we acknowledge the expanding role of schools in our communities. Our K-12 partners participate in the Better Buildings Challenge, the Alliance, and we have about 13 uh, Better Buildings Accelerators that, that focus on specific barriers, and more information uh, can be found on our website. And the Better Buildings platform is about replicating uh, successful solutions to mitigate or remove the barriers to energy efficiency. And so some of the things that we get excited about are um, how leaders drive change, emerging technologies uh, and energy efficiency and renewables, student involvement. We're also concerned about the uh, adult workforce. And of course, we're doing some uh, work in the net zero space and we work with school districts as well as uh, uh, districts, entire districts around net zero. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry, you can keep going. So we currently have about uh, 27 uh, partners in the Better Buildings Challenge, and uh, this is the sector I lead here. And we're always looking for uh, participants so that we can get a diverse uh, amount of uh, solutions. We're looking for urban, uh, urban, suburban, and rural school districts to uh, participate because we'd like to understand what your challenges are and then how you successfully overcome those particular challenges. And so uh, solutions diversity is very important to us. But these are the districts uh, that are represented across the nation that we've been working with. And uh, specific to the Better Buildings Challenge, our partners represent about 5% uh, of the commercial sector space in our challenge and about 5% of our energy use. Um, and some of the things we focus on are what we call implementation models, but I like to uh, portray them as playbooks to overcome challenges or barriers to energy efficiency. So we have a variety of uh, playbooks on our Solution Center, um, showcase projects, and other cross-cutting resources related to building technologies and uh, renewable energy, along with infrastructure as well. Next slide. Here's a snapshot of uh, one partner in particular. This is the Poudre School District in Fort Collins, Colorado. Within the Better Buildings uh, platform, transparency and knowledge sharing is key to the success of the program. And so each of the little snapshots you see here represents a particular milestone or a tool that our partner shared with us and we work with them to develop it for publication. And uh, we post them so that others can go and take a look and replicate the solution in meeting your own challenges. Um, and in working with uh, over 350 partners uh, with, throughout the, the Better Buildings Challenge, we've uh, discovered some habits of these successful organizations. And that is to know the goal, data matters, we look beyond technology, we also understand that it takes an energy champion and a team to get these uh, programs uh, implemented. 
And then the other thing we realize our partners are doing is as they learn, they teach others, and they also evolve within their own organizations. So here you see the showcase project, um, the, uh, the, a snapshot of energy use and savings as a result of implementing energy conservation measures. And then you also have a snapshot of what we call the implementation model or playbook. And so we ask partners to share their approach to overcoming a particular challenge. And in sharing that, we're asking them to, you know, share with us your tools and resources, be it a spreadsheet, a policy, a PowerPoint presentation, and that will, um, it makes it easier for others to replicate and imp implement within their own organizations. Next slide. The energy efficiency and renewable energy nexus. This graph highlights uh, ways we work with schools and some potential opportunities uh, to engage with us um, with the, from your own organization. We do know that the critical role of uh, there is a critical role for schools in energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy. We realize that um, students are the next generation of our citizen uh, leadership. Um, there's a current workforce out there that we'd like to work with and um, share with them our career maps and the, the basic skills and aptitudes that are required for various energy efficiency uh, and renewable energy careers. Uh, we do have programs that are the test bed for emerging technologies. Uh, because as you know, DOE is primarily a research and development agency, and so we have lots of demonstration projects going on uh, across our technology operations. And then, of course, um, schools we recognize are stable properties, and they don't uh, easily change hands like other um, particular, uh, say, commercial uh, properties change hands. And so that stability is helpful in, in gathering information and data. And so we have our building technologies offices, our training and development program, and of course the Better Buildings, uh, Better Buildings platform, career maps, competitions, our energy literacy program, and of course our STEM education resources. And each of these areas uh, are highlighted in the appendix that we'll share with you. And some of the, the resources that are included in that includes information about the, the solar decathlon, uh, our solar training and career map with wage and skills descriptions, which is a great resource for our guidance counselors. We also have information on wind education and workforce initiatives for the, the wind uh, community, geothermal education initiatives, zero energy schools. This is around the accelerator. Um, the application of technologies, and we're also working with ASHRAE on design guidelines for zero energy uh, schools. We expect that um, to be ready towards the end of this calendar year. We have information on understanding hydrogen fuel cells. More education, uh, I'm sorry, more information included in um, this presentation for you. Next slide, please. In terms of energy efficiency, uh, the areas of impact that are represented here have specific uh, attachments to the programs, resources, and the type of technical assistance we offer through some of our campaigns. And this is um, a pretty much a, a comprehensive list of ways we've been engaging with uh, the K-12 sector, like in building uh, energy use and benchmarking. We have uh, interior and exterior lighting programs. We have a campaign around energy management information systems and how to best use those systems. Financing, uh, we have an energy savings performance contract uh, piece for K-12. We offer a primer on ESPC and how to use that mechanism to fund uh, upgrades in your schools. We have um, some fleet conversion information, working with our Clean Cities program. And I mentioned zero energy buildings earlier. We do have a zero energy uh, buildings accelerator that will run for about three years with some very um, intensive focused efforts around road mapping um, to, to get to zero energy. And then of course, um, our standards like the advanced plug and process loads 
lots of information about around workforce training and development, and then um, more specific information around the STEM uh, connection. Next slide, please. So thanks to uh, benchmark uh, to the benchmarking disclosure ordinances that are popping up around the country, I was able to pull this information uh, from Washington D.C.'s uh, site, Build Smart D.C., and I wanted to illustrate the benefits of energy efficiency and renewable energy. And this is a side-by-side -side comparison of energy benchmarks for two high schools here in the district. Uh, McKinley High School and Dunbar High School. Uh, McKinley High School was um, went through an extreme moder modernization uh, project, so they do have some energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, Dunbar um, went through that. That's a new construct, newly constructed building. I think it opened about five or six years ago, and also includes some uh, solar PV and other renewable energy technologies, but. The more important uh, point that I wanted to illustrate is the the importance of having access to energy data so that you can manage your energy use proactively, identify billing errors and other anomalies, and then you verify pre and post project energy use, greenhouse gas emissions, and of course energy costs. And then you can also assess the effectiveness of current operations, policies, and practices and it is system planning and setting goals and targets and timelines, um, and then of course communicating the results in meaningful ways. And I just found it interesting um, in comparing the building, and this is why we get excited about um, renewable energy technologies as well. If you look at the energy use intensity for McKinley compared to Dunbar, pretty significant difference. And then you go down and you look at their energy score at the bottom. I know energy score is very important for our K-12 sector, but I just wanted to illustrate the benefit of benchmarking um, and using good data and good data sources because bad data will not only characterize, mischaracterize the building uh, wrongly, but it will also result in dedicating resources to wrong building and systems that might uh, aggravate the problem. So um, energy does matter. Having access to good energy data is the, the basis of um, all of these smart decisions that we have to make around um, building performance going forward. Next slide, please. I think I'm at the end. Yeah, I'm at the end of uh, my presentation. And I know we've presented a significant amount of tools and resources from each of our organizations today, but the hope is that you will be able to um, take what you need, customize your toolbox to maximize your building performance, and do what is best for your school or school district. Um, and with that said, before... Should I do this before? Yeah, I think we can move into our, our Q&A. Let, let me just see if we have questions here. I think we do. Okay. Um, I'll start with, there was a question for Anissa, and then I'll go to Sharon. Okay, Anissa. Yes, There's hi. A, there, hi. <laughs> um, the question is, are you considering the topic building benchmarking as part of any green school energy efficiency curriculum? Yeah, I'm really glad this question was asked because we we are moving much more toward connecting three of the things that I talked about. I talked about the connection between Green Apple Day of Service and Learning Lab, uh, making sure that you know it's easy to connect those those acts of service in schools with um, what's available to um, teach students. Um, that's also true of the ARC platform that I talked about. So we're actually um, currently working with nine school districts, um, around 100 school buildings. Um, in ARC to make sure that we understand exactly how ARC works for schools, um, how the data is um, 
being collected and used and, and what the value of that platform is for schools. So we're learning a lot about um, how ARC is, is working for schools. And one of the things that we are doing with those um, hundred schools or so that are using ARC is um, connecting some of that benchmarking activity to the classroom. So we're using, we're pulling in um, learning lab resources, learning lab lessons, um, and connecting them with um, the various um, pieces and parts of the benchmarking that exist in ARC. Um, and um, at some point, relatively soon, that will be a formal connection. So we'll actually have that um, lesson content um, keyed to the content in ARC to make sure that that um, connection, especially when you're using ARC in schools, is an easy connection to make. Great, thank you. Uh, Sharon, uh, next question for you. Uh, the statement is, it's great to see so many valuable resources for helping schools achieve green goals through the Green Schools Alliance and the USGBC. While many schools are actively involved in greening up, for those schools that aren't yet on the path, what are you seeing as the primary barrier or primary barriers for them? For example, time, cost, anything else? Um, I think it's the anything else. Usually once a school gets interested in sustainability, sometimes the time and cost factor come into it. But when I was um, working for New York City school system, and in that school system, it's mandated to have a sustainability coordinator as a volunteer on your staff. It's more about educating them about sustainability and why they should go green. That was the very first thing that I had to do with newer principals or newer sustainability coordinators that were just designated. They're like, I have no idea what sustainability means. Why on earth should I do anything? That was usually the, the barrier to entry into it. Once you got them educated on sustainability and energy efficiency and saving money and all of the good stuff that goes along with healthy and sustainable schools, it wasn't quite as much of an argument as to why they should do certain things. Then that's when the time and the cost factors usually came into it. They're like, well, I just don't have time to do all of these different things, or I don't have enough money to do all of these different things. Um, but to me, education is the, the first primary barrier. Got it. Thank you, Sharon. I'm going to punt this next question to Anissa, and then I'll follow up with um, a, a few questions specific to the D Department of Energy. Uh, Anissa, uh, the question is, can you talk specific home energy efficiency lessons that have been successfully taught in schools? Yeah, I, I think when we, um, when we think about the curriculum that works best for teachers, so the stuff that actually helps them achieve what they're trying to achieve with their students and meet the standards they're expected to meet. There's a lot of general energy concepts that are necessary to, um, to the education that they're trying to provide. So a lot of the energy lessons that we have in Learning Lab are um, pretty like very important basic knowledge of how energy works and how energy is used in buildings and um, it's it's good stuff but it's the basics that you know frankly a lot of adults probably don't really know <laughs> um, and so a lot of that is translatable to any building uh, but I also wanted to mention that um, I'm sure you've had them on in the past crystal but the Alliance to Save Energy has a great um, a great schools program that they run that um, brings some hands-on tools into schools um, to work on uh, energy efficiency education. And um, they actually um, have gotten funding from utilities in the past because some of their lessons are particularly oriented toward um, bringing that information home and affecting home energy use in that school district. So um, if you're particularly interested in that translation, um, the Alliance to Save Energy is a pretty uh, great source for um, that kind of uh, hands-on education. Wonderful. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention regarding home um, energy efficiency is uh, we have a webinar that should be archived by now. It was uh, put on by our Better Buildings Residential Network, 
and the topic was back to school engaging students in energy efficiency at home and in the classroom. That webinar was held on Thursday, August 17th, and you can check our website um, for more information. But we did have guests um, to talk about you know, home energy kits and involving uh, the classroom connection to the home. And one of the presenters we had, we actually met at um, the Green Schools Conference. Uh, that presenter was from Fayette County Public Schools in Lexington, Kentucky. So lots of good information was presented. And again, that webinar should be archived by now. It's called uh, Engaging Students in Energy Efficiency at Home and in the Classroom. And that was held on August 17th. Now, there was another question uh, regarding DOE resources. I have a, I have quite a few questions regarding um, specific technologies, including um, HVA systems, retrofits, chillers, and so on. We can we actually have very specific uh, information, performance, and cost information on the Better Buildings Solution Center. The filters that we have on our revised website um, they work pretty well, and so you can filter. Uh, the uh, information you're looking for by technology as well as building type. So you can pull up, you know, chiller specifically, K-12 specifically, and then um, you'll see lots of information around that. But we do have partners and um, folks out there that are still pursuing HVAC system retrofits and all of the energy and economic uh, information around that is available on the Better Buildings um, Solutions uh, website. And in particular, uh, okay, there's always a question about funding. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any funding opportunities available um, right now, specifically um, for K-12, but um, we do offer technical assistance through engagement with our programs. And so that is uh, one way we can continue with the ongoing support. And if you're interested in uh, the Better Buildings Initiative or any of the programs that have been mentioned, um, do give us a, 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 send us an email. Our contact information will be included in, uh, in the presentation. So, you know, by all means, send us an email. We can get you um, specific answers to your questions. Uh, how, oh, we have three minutes left. I wanted to mention a few more things before we move on. Yes, the um, first I wanted to mention that we have an upcoming Better Buildings webinar um, that will continue in our Better Buildings uh, series. And that next webinar is on Tuesday, October 3rd from 3 to 4 p.m new tools for leased space energy efficiency. So we hope that you forward this information to your colleagues, and we look forward to your participation on that call. Um, and then uh, before I close, I'd like to thank our panelists very much for taking the time to be with us today. And thank you, audience, for your participation as well. And again, feel free to contact our presenters directly with additional questions, or if you weren't able to get your question answered during our Q&A period. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Better Buildings Challenge or Alliance, please check out our website or feel free to contact my colleague Holly Carr or you can email me regarding uh, K-12 buildings. And I encourage you to follow the Better Buildings Initiative on Twitter for all the latest um, and greatest information regarding uh, what our partners are doing. You will receive an email notice when the archive of this session is available online. Um, with that said, I think we're just about up on our time, and let me just check to see if there's it. Oh, okay, one more question regarding water. Yes, we do have in, uh, information on the Better Building Solution Center regarding water and wastewater projects, okay? So we have expanded um, from beyond buildings to include other uh, infrastructure-related items. So again, thank you for your interest and your participation on today's webinar, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. This will conclude our session.